What is going on everybody and welcome to another weekly update and in this video what I'd like to do is provide you guys a state of the market, some upcoming events, some earnings, uh, anything I see with potential that could pivot the market. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as I do provide daily updates as well uh, to get you prepared for each and every day in this lovely market. Uh, so that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, my list here for the week. Got some interesting uh, things uh, coming up, uh, to be honest. Um, big thing is, is obviously we have the Fed rate interest rate decision. Uh, that is on Wednesday at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that rate will come out at 2, and then you'll have uh, Powell fielding questions at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. Um, as far as upcoming, I've essentially limited anything that is upcoming to either the core CPI release or monetary policy. Everything else, in my opinion, really doesn't matter aside from earnings, uh, which I do have here. The new earnings cycle will start in October uh, so around October 15th, we're going to start getting the banks. And then shortly after, you're going to start rolling into uh, big tech. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, watch list, 116 points on the SPX. Uh, that is huge, uh, considering essentially the average uh, expected move on SPX is roughly around uh, anywhere between 60, 70, potentially sometimes 80. Uh, so a huge move uh, this week. Obviously, you got a big event coming on, uh, Tesla 54, BA 55, JPM 4. Uh, now, again, I've, I've talked about just doing these as far as watch lists because of the fact that, um, you know, in this market, I've been playing a lot of SPX and um, I've been playing in Tesla uh, shares as well. SPX, I play options and then uh, Tesla I typically either will play options, but more heavily so on shares. Uh, just because of the way the market's been, I think that's what you have to do. You don't chase anything. I think you your trading should be boring unless you're investing in something for a longer period of time. Um, trading the same thing day in and day out helps a lot. Uh, and there's some tax advantages to trading SPX as well. So just be mindful of that. But anyway, what we're doing here, what what is going on? Um, Again, earnings, a big thing coming up. But aside from that, we are focused strictly on core CPI and we're strictly focused on monetary policy. Now, this past week, we had the core CPI. And I know a lot of people are saying, you know, the inflation is coming down, inflation is coming down. You have to understand that inflation cycles around to different things, and rightfully so. Uh, so, the beginning of the spring, we had, you know, used cars were up tremendously, leading a lot of uh, inflation. Uh, that rolled down, and then it was just pure energy and food. Now it's cycling into services and rentals. Uh, now, my thesis coming into all this, you know, I was talking about, um, I think at one point, um, inflation could have been transitory. Um, but the fact that Russia and Ukraine kicked off right when um, you know, we just started rolling out of the pandemic stuff, just started to get normal uh, with supply chains, and then bam, <laughs> got hit with uh, this massive amount of restrictions um, uh, going because of Russia and Ukraine, uh, the sanctions that were placed on Russia, and then just the whole oil debacle has just been uh, absolutely absurd. Uh, so I think at one point it could have been considered transitory. I don't disagree with that. Uh, but now, obviously not. It's it's That's not what the case is. Now um, you have this massive strain on oil and and what that's played out to be and, and the cascading effect that it's having on everything else. Um, because now you have the Fed trying to combat inflation with a tool uh, that... that uh, that doesn't directly affect uh, oil prices. Uh, now, yes, oil is dialed back, um, and so that has helped, but it's still very high. Everything is still very high. Even all the things that we've seen uh, that have really spiked, they, yes, they have come down, but they're still very high. Uh, you're just seeing a massive spike right now in rental units and in 
like in services. Uh, so being said, it, it would make sense because people, you know, peak back in March uh, with um, trying to sell their houses, the, essentially almost that could could potentially play out to be the top of the housing market um, is starting to roll off. And so now all the people have sold their houses. Now they're looking for rentals and people are going ridiculous, paying ridiculous and putting tons of money out there for rental units. Uh, so there's just massive demand for rent, which I think is going to continue to run because people aren't going to be able to afford uh, a home loan. And so you've seen new home builds um, dial way back, right? And people uh, selling their homes, right? The, that whole market is taking a big hit right now. And the, I don't even think it's done yet. Um, you're going to have a lot of people that are trapped, can't afford um essentially can't afford a mortgage loan and so you're going to get a lot of bankruptcies that i think are coming right around the corner again these things are really hard to time uh, but you're seeing it play out you're seeing uh, tons of people strike because they're being overworked because it's hard to find uh, high quality candidates for jobs and so the people that do have um, uh, high caliber um, essentially uh, positions uh, that they are being overworked. Um, and other people, and this is one thing that they don't show you, is a lot of the really full-time jobs are, there's tons of jobs out there, but nobody's qualified to take the jobs. So people are working multiple, like, part-time jobs to to get this. So this growth you're seeing is one person working two, three, four jobs, just trying to, to make ends meet to stay up with uh, the gas prices or to stay up with rental costs. Uh, so much so that families are moving in together to be able to afford rental units. Uh, so you're seeing this massive demand. You're seeing this huge spike in, um, in interest rates and in, 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 on home loans that you haven't seen since back in 2008, uh, right? Uh, I think it reported over 6% this past week. And then um, obviously this past week we had core inflation. Uh, we came in. And we were coming off of 8.5, expecting lower. Again, if you followed me at all this past week, I was really expecting it to come in lower than they were predicting at 8.1. I was like, maybe we'll actually see some sevens this time. But again, still very high. I wasn't expecting anything to dial back too much. But I think if we hit 8.1 or lower, we probably would have ran off that. Um, but it's still very high. But it, and this is why I always say it really just depends on how the market's going to take it, not how you're going to take it. And um, we came in at 8.3. So after two historic 75-point basis moves, we have barely chinked the armor because, again, the inflation is rotating out of different things. You're seeing a spike in rentals and the spike in services. And then things will rotate again. And I think we're going to get another huge rotation back into food and energy and because you're going to go in, in the winter months. And so whatever dip you're getting now in food and energy is, is going to be it. And then it's going to spike tremendously going into the winter months. And, and so whenever you think that it's going to dial back inflation, you're going to get that next cycle and it's going to hit. Uh, I think we will hit peak inflation roughly around that February, March time period. Uh, right in towards the back half of winter, uh, that when that demand for oil comes down, uh, then you might see some sort of low and some more significant uh, drop in inflation at that point. So um, that is kind of what I'm looking at. And, and leading into this, you know, we got uh, midterms coming up. In my opinion, none of that matters. In my opinion, none of that matters at all. Uh, what matters is um, what I list, have listed here is your core CPIs, uh, which I think um, are going to continue to rise going into these next couple of months. I, see, I think you've you've hit the the last bottom, and I think you're going to see some uh, massive numbers creeping up on this. And then uh, monetary policy. Um, now, monetary policy does come out on Wednesday. Um, a lot of them, people are saying 75. A lot of people are saying we need to be over four by the end of the year. Uh, so we got three more meetings, including this week. We don't have anything in October, so we do get that break. So my thing is, is uh, for monetary policy, that we're going to have this one, we're going to have a whole month and a half that leads us into the next earnings cycle. If we're going to get a pump, it's going to come after. We just have this same setup 
uh, with the last uh, earnings cycle, we had that gap between uh, monetary policy. We're getting set up for that right here. Uh, we're going to have monetary policy on Wednesday. I think we're going to get a, another big dip down. Uh, and then, uh, again, depending what it is, a 75-point basis move, um, I'm not expecting a whole lot. We, we, you're going to realize that the two back-to-back 75-point basis moves and a third one, that is is hurting us really bad. It's not you're not going to see it now, uh, but when I'm talking about layoffs and everything like that, you're going to see some really bad layoffs uh, here in Q4. And so there's just be mindful of that this Christmas I think is going to be a very dark Christmas, and there's not going to be a, there's going to be a lot of people laid off because of what's currently going on with this monetary policy. Um, so, but with that being said, it's not going to stop a pre-earning run, and I think after this report, you're going to get a a, a nice pre-earning run uh, because in 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 realizing that uh, November December are going to get really nasty and we aren't in a typical cycle typically we have that um, that Christmas run and we saw this last Christmas uh, things just got nasty right like things peaked in November and then things we never really had that uh, Christmas cycle uh, or that um, yeah that Christmas cycle. Oh, the Christmas uh, rally, the Christmas rally, right, is what it's considered. Uh, we didn't have that at all. We just kind of really died, 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 and then we just fell off. And I think that's the same exact thing that's going to happen here. It's going to get really bad, though, I think, again, uh, around that February. Because uh, the next uh, monetary policy is towards the end of July, or not July, uh, January, excuse me. And um, I think you're going to see the peak again around there. And then we might start to see the market start to drop and potentially run from there. So, again, I think after this monetary policy, you're going to get some kind of creep back up. And so that's what I talked about. I really want to watch this leg. If we do get a 100-point basis move on Wednesday, you may introduce panic. And so if we get panic in the market, I want to see what's going to happen. Are we going to really start to sell off heavily at that point? Um, people realized uh, this past week that FedEx, um, you know, they came in and they announced and realization hit that, um, you know, FedEx, the lifeblood of uh, the economy is doing poorly, that they pulled a full year's guidance. They pulled full year's guidance. And then the CEO came on and said, there's, a, there's going to be a world recession. And, you know, originally FedEx took a major hit off of that. Uh, the market uh, sold off really heavy on Friday initially, uh, but then it kind of held. Now, I believe that's because we're ro rolling in a monetary policy. Again, if we can have a 75-point basis move, um, let me actually go pull up the chart here. And some things I've talked, I've marked the 75-point basis move. We've hit that already. Uh, so if my thesis is correct and it's been correct so far, you know, we've come to these levels when that's when we think we're going to hit. Normally, we bounce when we hit that level. So I want to really, really see what happens here. Um, we might get some sort of rally if it's 75. And then when we hit this, uh, coming into this, this is one thing I want to see if we can rally up to this uh, this 4K mark. If we rally up to this 4K mark, I think we can flush pretty heavy after that. Uh, that would essentially set us up for earnings mode. And maybe we stay right around here, this 38 uh, 30, which could be potentially make a higher low here. Um, I think we could float around here as long as it's not 100. If it's a 100 point basis move, you're going to see 3636 and you're going to introduce panic. We don't want to break this 3615 mark. Again, I said if we did break this though, my buy is down here. Anything past this 3636, I'm going to start buying and DCAing heavy down here if this does happen. Um, something else I've talked about uh, in uh, my Thursday video is that uh, the average, again, the average recession is roughly around a, roughly around that 43 percent, 43 percent for average recession. We barely only hit uh, 25 at the best, at the very bottom of what we've seen so far. Now, so again, you're looking at roughly 43, uh, 2750 could potentially happen. That's just an average. Again, averages, you can come in lower, you can come in higher. We have to see. 
again, there's a lot of black swans uh, with Russia, China, uh, Taiwan incident with the um, whole um, housing sector and mortgages, um, potential bankruptcies across the U.S. Uh, we have to realize that in 2008, uh, the housing market took down everything and, and what that means. And again, we have that and we have the energy crisis on our hands. So we got potentially three black swans out there, potentially something else we don't see could strongly be there as well. Uh, if one of these things, if we come in, this is my this is my thing, and I try to talk about this. If we are floating around here and one of those black swans react, that's going to be enough to break this and then really start to sink as heavy to potentially down those to those numbers. I'm not saying it will happen, and I don't want you to say just think that we're going to go down because I just said in, after this meeting, uh, we're going to start getting an earnings mode. Uh, now, the earnings could really send us down right i've always said if you want real true numbers you look at the earnings that's the other piece of the puzzle that i want you to pay attention to um, because we've seen foundation cracks on microsoft apple tesla what's going to happen in q3 is going to be the question i think q4 is going to be really nasty uh, but Q3 will give us a lot of insight. Now, if we do somehow, if the companies do look good in Q3, uh, that may allow us to run a little bit further. But you have to realize that if we do run a little bit further, that's just going to make the Fed um, throw out higher rates because they think the market can take it. When in fact, um, and they've they've been blatantly obvious about every move that they made. They haven't said that they they weren't going to do what they did. They've been doing 75 point basis moves and made that clear as day. And Powell said clear as day. You, you haven't seen <laughs> the market's going to feel the pain. So take that for what it's worth. Um, but that is where I'm seeing it thus far. Uh, so a very big, very pivotal week this week. Uh, we want to see what does happen with everything that is going on. Um, again, all the other, you're going to get tons of data. You're going to get tons of Fed members, right? You're going to have smaller interday moves because of these things. Uh, but your pivotal moves are coming from the things that I'm talking about, about the core CPI, monetary policy, and earnings. And, and not just uh, any earnings, there's particular ones you really need to pay attention to, it's particular ones that have the hold a lot of weight, uh, like your Teslas, your Apples, your Googles in tech, your banks. Uh, you want to make sure the banks are holding up. Uh, those will be interesting to see on the 15th of next month, uh, how the banks have been doing. Uh, the banks are rolling off a lot of layoffs right now before you even get into earnings. Now, if that's not a warning shot, uh, you've had multiple, multiple warning shots. Uh, you can't just assume this thing's going to go back up. I know this thing is designed to go back up. And I, again, am a permable. And right now, I, I'm just not feeling the upside. There is just way too much going on. And I've seen a lot of different markets. And, and the markets will recover typically. But right now, I, I've never seen so much bad data, so much and not just like data, like the things I like focus on, not what they advertise and all that BS. I'm talking about what I, I focus on. I'm seeing a lot of really bad stuff that really matters. And it's just not good right now. Things just aren't getting better. And we just, like I said, we just saw foundation cracks in these major companies. These major companies are frontline, um, are seeing what's really going on here. And they're going to report the numbers, and you're really going to see what's happening. They've been laying off. There's a reason they did a stock split. They didn't do a stock split you know, so that we fell 20% in the general index um, just now. Why would they just do it now? Like a lot of them just did it over the past quarter. Like why would you go and do, do a stock split in the past quarter if you didn't think things were going to get worse? Could potentially drop another 20% on the general index. So that means everything else that still has meat in the bone is going to get hit a lot more. I'm not saying that we can't push up. I, again, believe we're going to get another cycle here in about a week or two where we're going to push. Unless something else, some other new data comes out that's going to sink us. It's a very strong possibility. We're walking on eggshells. There's a lot of bad things that can play out and make things 10 times even worse than they already are. 
become very numb to how bad things are and they're extremely bad. And again, I think the only reason why things look okay is because we have that circulation of money uh, that we keep sending billions of billions of dollars to Ukraine and because that circulation of money and then purchasing goods from us is helping in some aspect or else I think inflation would be so much more out of control than what it currently is. And if then that's saying a lot. So with all that being said, um, again, very pivotal week. Uh, I really want to see, I am very um, put heavy around the 4K mark. Just FYI, again, not uh, financial advice, um, but watching 4K, very, again, a strong break, looking for that retest and then another dump. I think at that point, uh, again, if we don't ha in induce any kind of panic, uh, I'll be looking to go long at that point because then we're getting into earnings mode without monetary policy for a while. It's not saying that, again, you're going to turn around and on the 13th of October, you're going to have another CPI. So that may dip us back. But I think between uh, monetary policy and core CPI, uh, right, you got a, roughly about like two weeks or so. Uh, so that you're going to get, I think at that point, you're going to get the pre-earnings rally. And then you have the core in, on uh, November 10th and then um, or October 13th, excuse me. And then that will kind of help guide us as to what people are thinking about what the next move is for monetary policy in November, right? So maybe if it's it's, it's not horribly bad, maybe the market is like, we're just going to keep running because we know the winter months are going to be bad, right? So just be mindful of that. Again, uh, it's a 16, 116 points priced in this week. Uh, so the market's already expecting a huge move this week, huge, huge move. So we, we definitely have to see the premiums on the on the put side are, are going to be really bad. That's why I'm kind of actually hoping we do pop up to the 4K on Monday. And then um, at that point, it will give us enough headroom to kill premium. That way, um, when we get monetary policy, 75 or 100. Again, if you hit 100, that's pure panic. Uh, the market right really start to panic again off the, just off of that. So just keep that in mind. So. Watching those levels again, uh, 75 point basis is roughly around that uh, 3823. Kind of hit that, um, and then again, if 100 point basis move is that does come to the table, uh, I think we're gonna sink really heavy because I think the market's gonna be like, oh well, um, the Fed is is way off, and this is going to get way worse. And so again, which I think earnings rolling out in about a month is really going to um, really gonna solidify that. So. Uh, when it comes to Bitcoin, Bitcoin broke back under 20. Um, again, watching that 18, uh, 18K, 673 mark breaks that. Again, psychological levels. I think this thing, uh, I rounded by the by 5K, typically a couple grand maybe here. Maybe maybe it's three grand until it breaks back under 10K. Then obviously you'll start going back to more like psychological levels or maybe 1K, 500K. Once you get under 10K again, uh, uh, will we get under 10K? There's no idea. If we get panic. Yes, I do believe Bitcoin will go back under 10K. Uh, I don't think anything is safe, uh, even though I think Bitcoin and crypto are going to come out on top of this whole situation. Uh, I don't, I've never lost faith in it, but I'm going to guarantee you that uh, when panic comes, everything and everything looks the same, everything's going to sell just as heavy. So just be mindful of that. So uh, watching that level for bitcoin um dollar through the roof oil uh, still sitting at 85 i think this is just a lull i think well, we haven't even seen the peak of oil i see the peak of oil again i think roughly around um probably january february i see the peak of oil and then from that point i think inflation can really start coming dialing back but uh it's getting there and you, i think you still have to get through a lot before then uh tesla Tesla has been very strong, and I think it's because it's getting an earnings cycle. I do believe as long as things don't get too crazy, we could potentially revisit this uh, 267. So kind of watching this level this week, if the market really starts to sell, uh, if we can get a dial back here, uh, we we'll definitely want to try to pick it up here, keep a tight stop if it does hold. Uh, otherwise, I uh, could potentially look for a break at the 113. If it does break here and retest here, I'll be loading there as well and riding into earnings. So I definitely want to be in Tesla on a pre-earnings move uh, as it does like to move a lot. And it seems like it's still moving pretty decent, even though it's stock split. Um, 
we'll see what the next earnings cycle is. With Tesla, you really have to see how the earnings cycles are uh, to really determine um, how much uh, the diluted shares have really had an impact on on um, on Tesla. So we'll see uh, going into this next earnings uh, how big of a move because normally it's had it had like uh, two, three hundred, a hundred point moves. So remember before, I remember before the, even the first stock split, like Tesla would run like four or five hundred points at a time. And it dropped down about um, three to roughly about 300 points. And now it's looking like maybe 150 points. Uh, so that's what that's what stock splits do, right? It dilutes the shares. So you don't get these the big moves like you used to. Uh, so, again, uh, not a huge fan of stock splits, but we'll see. We'll see what happens again going into this earnings. So watching those levels there. Uh, BA, again, I just use this one to gauge value. Uh, value stocks again we had the break i think we might we're going to get another strong retest up here potentially at the 155 and then potentially sell pretty heavy at that point so we'll see what happens there jpm again in this downward channel can't break this top of the channel i think we're going to revisit the 111 mark again if we break that i think you're going to have a pretty hefty drop here Again, all pending on monetary, any monetary policy and everything to line up uh, for this thing to really start selling heavy. Um, again, there's no real positive news, and I don't see any positive news. I think only kind of positive news that you can really get out of everything is if the earnings do really well. I think at this point, the market is looking for some positive news for the earnings. Uh, and again, I saw cracks in the last earnings. So if this earnings, they're really bad, that's going to introduce panic. Uh, whether it's a 100-point basis move or really, really bad earnings from someone like Tesla, that's going to introduce panic. Uh, and then, then we could see our, our rollover. The other foot I've been talking about that's going to drop uh, or one of the other black swans can work out too. So there's all that. So, uh, But that's pretty much what I got. It's a very long video. Uh, there's a lot of information I wanted to provide and a lot of things I think we really need to be focused on. Uh, not all data uh, matters that much uh, at this point. It's just it's purely fed in inflation and, and looking at what really matters, uh, looking at earning statements, looking at uh, core and looking at monetary policy and not just what is spoken, but actually what actions are taken, uh, what actually core CPI comes out in that report, not what people talk about, not what estimates are uh, and what actually action is taken in monetary policy are what matters everything else is white noise it's going to sway the market temporarily uh, but realize that uh, what really matters is when these big reports come out it's when you're going to get your big pivots um, so just be mindful of that so if you made it this far i do appreciate you go ahead and drop a thumbs up until next time i'll see you guys later